everybody. How are you guys doing today? Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you guys checked out the uh, painting I did on cardboard. I finished the first one. And all you have to do is leave a comment. And next Tuesday, I will pick the winner who gets it. It's just to show you that you could take any piece of scrap or something that you would recycle or throw into the garbage and make something from it. And the winner will be picked next Tuesday. All you have to do is leave a comment on the video itself. And um, that's it. So I got a few questions and I'm going to show you a few things. So bear with me and hang in there and all that fun stuff. Okay, first and foremost, let's talk about, since I'm going to be doing another video on... Let me just move over here. I'm going to be doing another uh, another giveaway on Creative Paper Clay. And they also have something called Delight, which is air dry modeling compound. And it is um, so lightweight and it's durable. And I made a plaque from it. I don't know if I have a picture. If I do, I'll add it at the end um, of what I did, you know, of how it looks. Um, but it, it's really cool. It feels like marshmallow and I'm doing a little experiment right now because I have not used this in a while and I had it in a plastic bag and it's very hard. It's like rubber. <laughs> so I sprayed some water on it and I'm going to experiment to see if the water will soak and make this more pliable or if it's going to, cause you can see it's kind of already, um, getting soft, but you see, it's very hard. It's like hard, <laughs> like there's no point. I mean, it's just hard. So I sprayed some water on here and I'm going to set this aside and we'll see how this, I'm going to really soak it on both sides. How this, uh, if it softens up or not. And that'll be set to the side. And that is called Delight. So I can show you what that's like. And I'm going to set that over here. And just let that soak and get wet. And that's the package for it. And hopefully these feel smushy. So that's still good. Okay. Now, a few things I want to show you. I did these and I'm going to talk to you about them. Um, I saw them on ilovecreate.com and they are the, which I have tons of these, the puffy paint and it's wax paper and you of course do it on the wax side and they make window clings and you draw whatever you want on here on your wax paper. You peel it off, put it on your window and you have window clings. So I made these for my daughter cause she's, her room's all decked out in Halloween stuff. And, um, I had it kind of up here more, but, um, yesterday it wasn't all the way dry and I went to peel it up and it kind of tore off. So I left it dry again overnight and it's good. So I'm going to put that one up on her window. Now I thought I would be clever. The heck is that coming out of there? I thought I would be clever and do another spider web for her other window. Cause she has two windows in her bedroom and do the floor. I have a fluorescent orange. And she loves pumpkin. So I thought, wow, let me do a fluorescent pumpkin because won't that look cool in the window? However, when I put it on, for whatever reason, I guess next time when I do it, this was all an experiment. I had seen them do it, like I said, on um, a plaid. Uh, I think it was, yeah, it had to be the Tulip website or something like that. I, I don't even recall right this second. Um, but you can go to the plaid website or the Tulip website where, um, and they have all kinds of cool things on there. So I did it the fluorescent pumpkin, but when I did it, underneath was still wet. Like I did the spider web and then I did the pumpkin on the fluorescent pumpkin. And for whatever reason, it chose to bleed into the black underneath. And as you can see, became somewhat of a muddy mess. Now, my daughter won't mind that. Of course, it's my first one. And once I peel these off and put them on her window to see what they look like, um, you know, I'll, I'll probably do another one, like let this dry first and then do the pumpkin on top. Now, it lifts off fine after it's dry. And then I just took black permanent marker and did little eyes and all. 
And all you do is you peel it up and it comes up and it's, you know, you want to make sure the lines are fairly thick. You can do anything. Um, you can do absolutely anything on these. So it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know exactly like when I went to pull it up when I thought it was all dry, it kind of like, you can see it kind of gave the pumpkin a little bit of texture and it was kind of crappy at all. She won't really care, but like I said, I'll do it again. Um, but I did these spider webs for her and they'll go on her windows and you can make window clings. Now I have these little pieces of, um, like when you have a sticker and I had used the sticker, a heart sticker on, um, the painting that I'm giving away. And this was what came off of it. And one side is very shiny and the other side is dull. So you take the shiny side and this is just a little trick to show you guys. Um, let me just move in here a little bit. I'm kind of off center here a little bit. And I'm like all over the place, so bear with me. But anyway, um, I have the red puffy paints. I have to open this one because I haven't opened it yet. And all you would do is, which this is pretty cool, just go over the sticky side and you can put these on your window or use in your paintings because I'll show you the part that pulled off my thing in a second. And you want to make it fairly thick. And these come in bigger bottles and they're so, I think they're like $3.99 for the humongous bottle which is really, really great because of the stuff you can do with this. I use this on paintings um, in my mixed media painting. I'll use these for lipstick or different textures on, um, you know, like different parts or whatever. So you see how I did that? And I use that like kind of like as a stencil kind of thing. Just kind of move it around a little bit till you get to where you want it. Very cool. And like I said, you can design your own um, things. You can write your name. You can do a graffiti kind of thing. You can do whatever you want. So it's not, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're only limited to your imagination is what I'm trying to say. Um, if you're good at drawing, um, you know, I don't know, skulls or uh, cats or whatever. I mean, all you need is a piece of wax paper on the shiny side. And here we go. And I'll, this is going to have to dry overnight, but um, let me try to move it now because I really didn't think about that. Come here, little friend. All right, I'm going to move this. Oops, kind of took some of the little point off there. Move it with my finger. Wipe my finger and then lay this on there to dry. All right. So you leave it dry overnight and then in my next video tomorrow or whatever, once it's dry, I'll show you how it peels off and then you will be good to go. And it's something fun. I mean, it's something, you know, something cool to do. And like I said, your imagination is, you know, if you want to have hearts, if you want to get different colors and do rainbows, this is, they have a ton of the glow um, colors. This is orange. Um, they have green and, I mean, they have tons of them. Just be aware and that this, for whatever reason, the glows take a bit longer than the others to dry. Now, it might have been because it was thicker. I did do it like completely overnight, like almost like 18 hours it was, and it still was not dry. So it could have been that it was a thicker thing. Um, but just be aware that if you do do a spider web and something over it, that it's going to take longer than the spider web to dry. Maybe you all know that because you have common sense, but I, however, <laughs> do not. And, um, thought 18 hours, Hey, the spider web's dry. Why wouldn't it be? And it was completely not dry. And I really kind of screwed it up and gave a texture that I really wasn't looking for. So, um, next time I will make sure that I, let the spider web dry and do this on top um, or be much more careful when putting this on. Um, or do this on a separate piece of paper and then add the pumpkin after. I don't know. Who knows? I'm just letting you know. But check these out because they have tons and tons and tons and tons of different glow colors, which are awesome. And the regular colors, like I said, I'm going to show you another trick with something else of this that I love um, in a moment. 
So, second thing, um, I got some questions. Um, I had asked uh, what other kind of things that you guys would like to see. Now, as many of you know, because of my name, knitting, um, I love to knit. And um, somebody had mentioned that they would, they're would they trying to start to knit and they would like to know, um, you know, have some demos on that. So my question is, what kind of demos are you looking for? Are you looking for how to start knitting from casting on to knitting to purling? Are you looking for uh, a, a pattern for something? Do you want to do a basic scarf? Scarf sounds like such a funny word when you just say it like like I just did like scarf, barf. I don't know. Anyway, um, do you, you know, are those the kind of things that you're looking for? So let me know. So then I know where to start because I don't, if not everybody's interested and only a few of you and you've already know, you already know how to cast on and knit, um, the basics, then, you know, let me know exactly what you're looking for. So then I can do a video on it. Um, I have no problem doing that. Um, I'm not getting my face on camera today because I've not slept. I don't know if I have a sinus infection or my whole right side is just my left side's numb and my right side of my face and everything. I just, I look horrible. So, um, not getting on camera. Um, trying to think of a couple other questions before I start. We did have a winner for Lyrical 66, um, was the winner for the creative paper clay. And I'm going to open it up right now while I think of the other questions. And show you guys what this is like. This is an air dry clay. Very awesome. And as you can see, you just pull it off, whatever piece that you want. And I'm going to be using this later, so I wasn't, I'm going to make something. So, but you can see that it's very, very soft, easy to work with. My only issue for me, and this is a personal issue, um, is that once it starts, you have to make sure that you keep it covered. Whether you keep it covered with a, a piece, you know, a plastic bag or a, t a wet towel or something because it will dry out fast. However, the funny thing is, the ironic thing is, is once you sculpt it and you're waiting for everything to dry, it seems like it takes forever. But when you're working with it, it will dry out. So, but it is very, very cool. And what happens is when I'm working with it, once this starts drying out and I have my little dog down here with me today and I just texted my husband, I said, oh my God, he is laying, he wanted the heater on and he goes over and he stands and he whines and stares at me until I turn the heater on for him because he's just that way. But, um, so it is a little drier down here today. However, how cool, I mean, you can make whatever you want. Now, let me give you a tip on something. And I'm going to do a polymer clay video later. And this kind of goes with that too. I go to the dollar store and I buy cheap tin foil. If you don't need to go buy cheap tin foil and aluminum foil, and you can go buy, I'm from Pittsburgh. We call it tin foil. I have no idea why. Um, even though I live in, I live in New Jersey forever, but there's certain things we say still. It's a bit, you know, flimsier and you really don't want to use it. Save those pieces when they rip off. But what you'll do is you'll take, you know, figure out which way to rip it. And you'll take it and let's say we're making a head, which is what I'm going to be doing. And you'll just roll it in a ball. And right now, and you would do this the same for polymer clay. And you would make it as big as you want the middle, the, the size of your head to be. Um... If I were making, let's say, let's get another little piece. And I'm going to kind of make it into a mush. And I would add that on there. Let's say that well, I didn't really do that right because I wasn't planning on doing this. Anyway, it, you know, if our head was a little bit bigger or we wanted to make it have a neck, 
you can get a toothpick and insert it in here and then insert it in here and you'll have a little standing thing if you want this to be the nose if you want this to be you would shape it that size and do it like that now I don't I think because this tin foil is so cheap I don't know if I can unwrap it I know I'm so cheap because I'm an unwrapper and I would sit here for hours and like Oh, I got this piece off and then add it because I'm just that cheap. My husband wouldn't agree because when I go to the arts or craft store, I'm not. Although I am a coupon user. Oh, look, I'm getting it. So then what I would do, because I'm not adding a neck right now. And I'm usually, I'm one of them people that do things like on the spur of the moment. Like I start with what my base, what I'm thinking, and then I go from there. So then I would just do, like, again, do it into a ball. And then I would lay it in the middle of my paper clay. And then you just form your paper clay around it. And you can see on my hands a little bit, it's starting to dry. Like on my hands, it gets like this film of like, I guess it's the paper pulp or whatever. But the only time, like I said, I have problems was, is when it really starts to dry. And what you would do is have your spray bottle. Or a wet paper towel and you would just give it a quick spritz or give your hands a little spritz. I'm going to roll it in a ball. So all the pieces are kind of correlated. And then we have this little face. This little head. And underneath, and you can, you go press, you know, to make sure that there's no air bubbles or whatever. And like I said, when you roll it, kind of roll it around so you get all the air bubbles out. And, you know, if you can see here where it's a little thinner and if you need to put more paper clay on it, you just take it from your package and put it on. You know, and then like I, I look at this side and I say, oh, that looks like that could be kind of a face. So maybe right here I'll pinch a little nose and then make like a little, maybe I'll make this a little eye socket. And you can see right there where my foil came through. So I'll just take a pinch more off and put it there and then just blend it in. So that's one thing you can do. And like I said, then you go from there. Let's say you want to make this kind of an owl or some kind of animal. You know, Halloween's coming. Again, I'm one of them people that don't really start off with a... We'll put like a little eyeball there for now. Just a little ball. Press it, it sticks. I don't usually start off much with a plan. one of them people or if I do start off with a plan of, as you have seen in many of my videos where I start off with the plan and end up nowhere near where I want to finish and then I'll add a little bit more to his nose and you get the point I want his nose to be a little bit more pointy And then over here, see, this is why I don't do things. I just add a little wing. All right, I'm adding another wing and then I'm putting it down. Putting it down, people. And then I'm, well, I'm going to show you one more thing with this and then, not with this owl, but. And you see how it, it's very easy to work with. I'm not against it at all. I do prefer polymer clay because I can put it through the pasta machine to um, help me, but I'm not against this. I do love paper clay. Um, I was on the paper clay design team and I loved it. But if I'm having a bad day with my hands, I'm not going to lie to you. It can be a, a bit, a bit tedious to work with because you are doing a lot of the you know, forming, but it is, it is a really great product to work with and fun. 
And I'm going to show you one more fun thing to do. Because, you know, I don't like just having one thing. All right, so that's his wings. And I would go in and smooth it. I would wet my finger a little bit with some water. Oh, God, Kelly. Spray a little bit of water, wet my finger, and see how it smooths. Look how nice that smooths. Again, wet my finger. Apparently there was a little bit of red paint on there, but it's okay. And this can be, the clay can be, which I'll show you. I'm going to end up doing two videos here because it's going to be longer than I anticipated. Because now I start things and then I go wacko crazy. So I start to have fun, and then I'm crazy. All right, so we kind of see where we're going here. Um, we kind of got this cute little owl started, you know, and I'd play with his eyes. And Oh, God, Kelly, stop. Just stop, woman. You know, I'd make this little pointy ear. So he has a nice little pointy little fish. Hello. You know, this eye's a little bigger, so I'd smooth them and give them. Okay, one more thing. I'm sorry. I'm going to roll this out into a ball, put it down, push it with my finger kind of flat, and then set them on it. Lift them up. Now you can spray a little water on the bottom if you want. A little water on the bottom. Never hurt nobody, did it? And go around his wing so it kind of blends in because you still want that wing to kind of but you want them to have a little bit of, this is hard to do quickly, but I just kind of want to show you guys some cool things with this. So if, like I said, you, you know, the next contest, if you don't win, they sell this at, um, Michael's and you can buy it online at Creative Paper Clay. Now, I start this, and then I could probably finish it, and it'd be something completely different than owl. We never know. I'm just one of those weirdos. But I wanted him to have some little feet, so I would kind of blend this. And you just blend it out. You know, it's like any other air-dry clay, really. And then you can go add your texture. Take your, uh, you know, if you have like a, I don't know what this is, uh, this thing, what's it called? <laughs> to make like paper. Oh my God, I just lost my train of thought. You know, when you do paper or whatever. But anyway, any kind of texture thing, the texture is wings to give them like a cool, I'll think of the name of what I'm thinking about, but I can't think. Yell at the screen, maybe it'll come out. You know, but you kind of just, so he has his little belly. And like I said, you just sit, sit and fiddle and give him his little mouth. You want him to have a little mouth. All right, I'm going to quit now. As promise. I'll just give him a little mouth there. Hello, little mouth. He's saying, woo, woo. And that's the beginning of a very bad looking owl. Oh, I got to give him a little oops right there for his little. See how you give him a little bit of texture? And see, right there, we got a little start of now. And I would sit and blend more and do more. And you can add on once it's dry. Um, I'd make his head a little bit bigger and all that. So that's something I'll play with later on. Okay, so that's number one. Number two with the creative paper clay. Last thing, promise. All right. So you take your creative paper clay and you push it down and I'm on my nonstick mat. You can use wax paper, glass, whatever you got. And I'm just going to, if you have a rolling pin, you know, from your uh, polymer clay or a bottle, like I always tell you, whatever you have, we use, lift it up so it don't stick. You can spray a little water on the bottom if you want. 
now something fun that you can do is take a stamp. Let's take a bigger stamp since we got a bigger piece. And stamp in it and just push. Give it nice, just, you know, slight pressure, push in. And then lift out, lift out. Mm -hmm. Yep, lift it out. Well, my plastic came off first. Lift out. <laughs> okay. And if you want to, you know, cut it around, you can use your X-Acto knife or this plastic thing that I can't think of what it's called. And then once it's dry, now you can put this in the oven um, to dry. I believe, I don't know. If it says, mm, I'm reading, I'm sorry. Yeah, dampen the fingers to smooth and rejuvenate while moistening. Fill in any cracks, yeah. So water does help. So maybe it will help that one that dried out. So now we have, and you just kind of, And let's see if we can get it up without distorting it too much because I did push a little bit and it is a little thinner than I would make it. But you would do it like on a piece of glass or whatever and then just move it so it can dry. You know, so you wouldn't have to move it rather. But look, and then you stamp in it. You leave it dry and you can make... If you want to make this a pendant for an earring, you know, I mean, of course you would shape it and do, you know, maybe take a cookie cutter or a shape cutter and cut out or just cut this normal, uh, a normal uh, square or whatever and put your hole in it now. Leave it dry. It shrinks just a bare, you know, just a little bit. And then when it comes out, when it's dry, then you can go and you can paint it. So I'm just going to set this little thing aside for another video so you can see what it looks like when it's dry. That'll take a few days or overnight, and we'll just lay that bad boy there so then we can see what that's like. Now, something else I did uh, very quickly. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my paper clay into my, I'm going to leave it in my, my bag that it originally came in, my container. And you really want to, you know, It'll last a long time, but it's not like polymer clay. You do not want the air to get to it. So just kind of, you know, wrap it up the best you can. Stick it in your bag. I stick it all the way in the corner and push it hard. Move it back. I'm going to show you. And then push out the air. Zip it. And then I fold it over this way. And if there's a little bit more air left, just undo it a little bit and push that air out. And then zip it back up. And then I fold it and fold it. And you can see there's a little bit, I'm not going to be worrying too much about that little bit of air because it's not going to get down to that. If the air bothers you, unzip it. And just push the air out again. But I'm going to be using this layer, so I'm not too concerned about it. But as you can see, it's flat. And then you just store it like this, and you'll have very good um, coverage that it won't dry. Because you want it very wrapped very tightly and all that. You can even use saran wrap or press and seal or whatever first. Wrap your, con wrap your package. Okay? Wrap it real good, and then put it in a bag. And you have extra uh, security. So security, 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 but you have it and that's an inside joke. Um, but, uh, then you know that you're good to go. So, <laughs> and I rhymed, it makes you rhyme and dance. Okay. So that's that. Now let me just show you one more thing. Jeez, I'm going to have to make it to a video. Okay. So this is something I had done on another video and what shall I do it on? All right, let me do it. I'll do it on here because, well, I don't think you're going to be able to see it on here. Oh, my God, if I was only prepared. Okay, we'll do it. 
we'll do it on my precious saved. I save every piece of cardboard and thing off of backs of paper and look how look at that nice cardboard. I like to do free gifts and things and so I'll do this on the back and then I'll okay so this is what I like to do. I like to take my paper clay and I like to saturate it very much with water. And you can use if you don't want to use your hands you can use you know a plastic knife and I'm gonna make my own modeling what did she say? Modeling paste? I think she did. And this is when you can decide if you want a thicker modeling paste or you want a thinner modeling paste. I don't think I have any stencils near me, but we'll see. Now, obviously, I'm doing I'm mixing this on cardboard, which honestly, if you want to know the truth, is not the smartest thing to do because what's the cardboard going to do with the water? It's going to soak it up. But because I'm not feeling that great, and I you know, and I'm me. Okay, so you see, we're getting a nice thin consistency here. Look at that. Delish. And then just kind of scrape it into a pile. You can see some of the cardboard's left up. But you're getting my point, correct? Correct. Okay. And this is something I'll show you in another video once it's dry. Now let me find, let me find something. Okay, maybe I'll use this. Wait one second. I'm coming, I swear. Oh, you know what? I think I might have, I do. Okay. We'll just do my thing that I did yesterday. My stencil. So let's say this is our stencil. And I'm going to bring you down. Okay. That's our stencil. So I'm going to take our faux modeling paste. Now there's many ways to make our own faux modeling paste. We, we know. But you just want to take a little bit, and this is if you have it. You have your stencil down and just run it over. Hold your stencil and just lightly run it over. Hold your stencil, Kel. <laughs> and then if you want to go the other way to make sure you're getting everything, all the holes. This one's being. And you just lightly go over it. And you can do as thick as you want. And you can see some of the brown in there. Okay, so I'm just going to go around the stencil where I kind of went off. And then I'm going to lift up my stencil and clean it off. And then you can always go back in if you have a little extra, if you don't want that on there. All right, I'm going to set that right there for now. Push that down. I'm going to scrape this off just so it doesn't dry on here. Although I'm not going to care because this is going to be, maybe I'll do a little bit here. Maybe I'll do a little stencil here with what's left. Since this is going to be a painting, I'll do, I'll just leave the little bit of texture on there. It won't hurt nobody. It'll just be some extra texture. I'm not going to worry too much about how much goes on there. And you'll just rinse off your tools like you would with paint because it is a water. I want to say a water soluble, although it's not water soluble, but it's, you know, you know what I'm saying. Okay. And then I'm just going to drop that in my water, my stencil. 
And I'm not even going to clean that up. I'm just going to kind of, whatever's left on my little thing here, rub it around so it kind of dries and adds texture to wherever else. And then you just drop your tool in your water too. Now, if I take my heat gun, I'm going to hold it up far here so you guys can get the point. You can dry it like this. It's not going to hurt nothing. I'm not going to draw the other one to waste your time, but I'll draw this one. So you can see it. And look, you have molding paste. So you actually, with your creative paper clay, have many options. And this is the one that's still wet, which you can see. And that's the one that's dry. Basically dry. I can see a little areas where it's still a little bit wet. So what I'm going to do is in my next video, of course, after I get the one thing dry, I'll show you this and then I'll put a little paint over it and show you what it does. So that'll be another video coming up. Because that has to dry now. And this is what happens to your hands. It's nothing that comes off with soap and water. It's not a big deal. So that is that. And then let's go back to our one here, if I can lift it up. Okay. And this is our one. And yet, look, if you leave it sit long enough in, I might even put this in a small dish of water and turn it, but you can see that it's starting to mold, um, be moldable, not mold like ooh, yucky, gross mold. But if you leave it in with water, it definitely will come back to life. So that's a great thing. So I'm going to probably add this to a little bit of, I'm going to add a little bit of water to this bag. Even this was sitting in water just from sitting on that plastic and you can tell it's starting to soften up. So that is great news. So what I'm going to do is finish the experiment by putting it back into my plastic bag. And then I'm going to add some water in here and um, maybe I'll just empty my water bottle in there and then not all of it, but just some, well, maybe all of it because there's a lot of clay. I just have to re remember to refill that and I'll leave the air in. I'm not going to worry about it because then I can kind of mush it around, take some of the air out. Apparently. And we're just going to kind of mush it like a dough. So I'll do that while I'm down here all day and just keep mushing. And then in my next video with showing you the other paper clay things, we will see if this experiment worked. And if it did, this is definitely, and this will definitely work with your creative paper clay also that I threw a big chunk away. Didn't even think about it because it was, I had, it was completely dried out. Didn't even think about this. And I'm not going to make you suffer and watch me do this. So that's just that. So I'm going to put uh, at the end of the video the picture I did with this uh, type of air dry clay. The fluffy light clay. And I made a wall plaque like I said. And I used it because it's very lightweight. And the creative paper clay will work just as well. But um... It was a project that I did for when I was on the design team. So this is great. So this will check back with tomorrow. And I will wipe my hands. And I hope you guys have a great day. I have a few more things I'm going to show you guys, but not in this video. So I hope you guys have a great day. Don't forget to enter the contest for the one painting. The other painting will be up probably next week, next Tuesday for the giveaway. And 
if you're watching this, if you come across me and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, mixed media, polymer clay, uh, air dry clay, knitting, anything that you, you know, jewelry making, whatever, like my uh, YouTube and share it. I do contests quite a bit. And I'm so blessed and thankful for all of my subs. And you all make me so happy. And I woke up again today to so many messages. And I'm so blessed. You guys inspire me daily. Your messages just really warm my heart. So thanks for staying, you know, be hanging out with me for all this time. But I wanted to show you some of the great things about paper clay. And if you have any questions, just ask. So I shall see you later. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Be kind to each other because you never know what battle somebody else is fighting. Don't forget.